Hello everyone, my name is Chuja King Fisher. I'm Katua Cherokee from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Today we're going to be making single wall baskets and uh, they call these Cherokee style baskets because there are uh, a lot of similarities to, to what we once did at one time and today uh, this has become quite an art form not only for us as Cherokee people but many of the southeastern cultures. Today what we're going to be using is we are going to be using number two round reed. And a lot of times, many people here in our local area ask where they can, can obtain this reed. Uh, if you're close by, you can go to the Cherokee Heritage Center there in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, www.cherokeeheritage.org, and check them out. If you're uh, outside of that area, you might go to some of the uh, to weaving basket weaving sites like the uh, Smoky Mountain Weavers Association and uh, and the like. Uh, thereof and and so today we're going to get started here and and uh, my daughter she's helped me get prepared for this I'm thankful for that uh, today what we're going to be using inside my tub here is uh, warm water and you don't need to fill it full completely because we're our reed is going to be soaking on the inside and all it needs to be doing is just slightly covered and it does need to be warm or as, as, as warm as you can stand and the two components that we're going to be using are our long pieces, which are the runners, or excuse me, the weavers. Some people might call them spokes. And then these right here, these are called the runners or the weavers. A lot of people try to call, call it string. It is not string. We are not tying the basket together. We are weaving the basket together. And so again, today we are making a single wall Cherokee style basket. There are several different ways that you can begin whenever, whenever you're a beginner, just depending on who your teacher is as to how you are going to get started. I am going to teach you the way that I started back all oh, many years ago when I learned how to do this as I sit and I watch many of the elders in my home community of Rocky Ford. What they would do is they would cut their spokes to length. Now understand when you cut them to this length right here, that basket's not going to be that big. You are going to be cutting some off the ends and they are going to be used to roll over to tie the basket in place. So what we would do is we would cut them to length. These are roughly about 15, 16 inches long. Even them up on one end and there are 12 spokes <clears throat> you're going to divide them up into six piece and you are going to find your center one of my spokes is shorter than the other so i'll discard that one and grab me another one out of the bucket here and we're going to find the center to each side, flatten out our spokes so that they're easier to work with. Now we place them in the water so that they will be easier to work with, so that they will be pliable because they are very dry whenever we begin with them. And so by placing them in the water, they are easier to bend. Now I want you to remember that as we begin to start. This is what it is going to look like. It is going to look like six going one way, six going another way. And as we begin to start, you're going to lay your runner from top left corner running crossways to your bottom right corner. And it's gonna look something like that. Now again, this is wet so that we can bend it, and so we will bend it straight up. Straight up into your upper right-hand corner. We will go in front of those reeds, and again, bend it almost at a 90, and we will catch that reed over to our upper left-hand corner. Bend it straight down 
to our bottom left hand corner and then back over to where we started is our bottom right hand corner and this is what it is going to look like you in a sense tie those 12 reeds together now Many basket weavers have their preference as they go around and whenever I go around, I go around three times, no significance to it. Sometimes you will find basket weavers that will say that they go around four times for the four directions, but I like the look of the three and this is what it looks like. Again, sitting side by side so that it gives your basket a clean look. And then we begin to separate our spokes. Now you do have to have an odd number of spokes to work with. And so we are going to divide these into groups. We are going to go under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two. Now we are at our last section here. And so far we have three, six, nine sets. If we divided these into twos, we would have 12. You remember me saying that we have to have an odd number to weave with. And so we divide these into sets of three. My last move was under two, so I will go over three and under three. And I come back to where I began, which was under two. This time around, because we do have odd sections, I am over those two. Now if you notice, as I move through, I am separating these sections. Now I want you to remember that these are sets. They are no longer individual pieces. And so we have 12 sets, or excuse me, 11 sets. Just because two sets have three in them does not matter if it matters so much you can cut two of those out one on each side so that way you can have two all the way around but you continue weaving over and under over and under now every time you come around you should be opposite of what you were before so here, I'm getting ready to go under. If you will notice, the move I made before was over. If you will also notice that my fingers are very close to my working area, my basket is turned away from my face so that the spokes do not hinder me, do not get in my way and I am turning the basket and not moving my hands away from in front of me. Now oftentimes I get weavers, they get frustrated and they will try to weave like this. You cannot weave a basket like that. That creates space like that and a good basket does not have space. Now many times I've heard people say, baskets are waterproof, you can carry water in them. Well, some baskets are woven so tight that you can carry water short distances, but eventually it will run through. Most baskets that I've seen that have carried water have something placed on the inside, whether it be clay, mud, or even a, an animal hide, a skin, woven or sewn on the inside to help the water from leaking out. 
and so baskets are not waterproof or at least our style baskets are not waterproof as we begin weaving and you begin moving away from the very center it does get a little easier you can go a little quicker a little faster but again each and every time that I work with my basket if you will notice I make sure that it is sitting on top of the one below it what I am doing is I am closing those gaps a good clean basket will have no gaps in it now normally whenever I am teaching the class I ask the weavers to make their basket the bottom of the basket as big as the palm of their hand because we are shooting a video for this and because time may be of, of essence here I am going to start working my basket now normally there are many weavers especially first-time weavers that will begin to see their baskets curve many times I can tell when a person is uptight or anxious about something because their basket comes up almost immediately. I can tell when someone is relaxed and enjoying themselves and paying attention because of the way their basket looks. Sometimes a person's basket is so relaxed that it will stay flat and you have to force your basket to come up. This is what we do. As we go behind each set, we begin to push it up. We manipulate that basket just a little bit and I always tell people, so you have to tell the basket what to do. You cannot let the basket tell you what to do. Many times when I see people frustrated, that's exactly what they've done is they have allowed the basket to take control. Now as we move up and as I weave this basket, you will notice that the reeds are slowly starting to come up. Now whenever we are making our basket, because this is a single wall, all of our splices should be on the inside of our basket. Whenever someone picks up our basket, they will normally look on the outside first, and so that will be the basket's first impression. Whenever you run out of your weaver, many times this is the way that we keep them wet, is by rolling them up and place them in the water. We will unroll a weaver. We will Place it there on the top, on the top of the weaver that we just finished, and then we will continue weaving our basket. Now, you will have to hold that piece down until you come around and over it, and when you come over it, it will hold itself down. Now, because we were in the process of turning our basket upward, there is going to be that one lazy ring, but that will work into the basket. Slowly, everything is moving up. Now, I do use my leg quite a bit, and so I do have my towel here with me to help keep everything nice and dry. And as I continue moving upward, the basket too moves with me. As I work on this basket, many times people ask about color. Now this reed, you can color and it will take color very good. It will take natural colors. Natural colors are like blood root, um, onion skins, uh, black walnut root and bark, and things of that nature, berries, 
and you can also cheat just a little bit and go to Walmart and buy the clothes dye and boil that and place your reed in that. The longer you boil it, the darker the colors are going to be. They do come out very beautiful as you begin to wash them. You will notice that they will fade just a little bit and even in the process of weaving a basket when we do add color, they will fade just a little bit. But once you are done and you tie the basket off, then you should have no reason to get it wet again for it to fade. Colors add your own touch to it and they are very beautiful but for today's for today's examples we are going to just use the natural here today now if you will notice that as we are going up the reed too has started to go up and the walls of our baskets are beginning to be straight up and down that is what we are looking for and as we begin to weave it does get just a little bit easier now many people say, oh, you can do that very fast, but they don't understand that I've been doing this since I was a child. Now again, remember that we will end on the inside. So I'm going to trim that up just a little bit. Tuck that one on the inside and get me another runner or a weaver. Again, remember this is not a string. We are not tying this basket together but we are weaving a basket. Place it there where you end it and keep going. Now it does get a little bit easier as, as you noticed I didn't have to hold that piece down because there is no tension on it as we are on the side of the basket now. Now you can make different shapes with this as you continue to work you can continue to push this in just a little bit and the basket itself will begin to come in i'm not looking for that part of it at least not in in this example here today but what i will do is normally when i get to a certain point and i can see exactly how tall that basket is going to be i will take my scissors and I will cut off the excess. Now what this helps me to do is this helps me to have just a little bit more control. Just It's not as tangled up as it once was. And as I flip through this, my sewing machine style, it becomes just a little bit easier to work with. Now whenever you are working with your basket, you will notice that the humidity in the air has a lot to do with the dryness of your basket. If there is very little humidity in the air, then the basket will begin to dry out and you will notice white strings or hairs coming off of these. If you notice that to an excess, you can simply dip your basket into the water, shake it out, and then continue on. You don't have to set it in there for and a, a lot of amount of time, you just simply have to place it in, uh, kind of like giving your basket a drink of water is what you are doing. So as we work through this, I'm going to finish this one runner right here, and we are going to call our basket complete. So I'm almost finished with this. Now, the way that we measure these runners, or excuse me, these spokes, is by taking a set and pulling them down. We want them to come down about halfway. And so my basket needs just a little bit more trimming here on the top. So I will cut all of that off. And then we do, or I do, what we call a hook and latch. Now it is a very simple process. And many times you can take these and as you begin to experiment with them, uh, I've, seen, I've seen people weave them along the top. 
Uh, I've seen people make very beautiful, beautiful rims along the top. And so there are things that you can do other than this simple hook and latch. You will take your first set, grab the second set, and then set the first on the inside, just like that. You hook it and you latch it. You hook it, you latch it all the way around. A very easy process as we begin to work with this. And again, if it is dry, they will break, but that's the good thing about a basket that if it breaks, we can repair it. If one of these were to break, we would simply cut it off below and then we would slip another piece down in there to take its place. Now the last one, you raise up your very first drop, slip this in, make it even all the way around, and there you have your single wall Cherokee style basket. Now I know I made this look very easy and but it does take some practice and if you have any questions uh, feel free to give me a call or excuse me feel free to uh, contact me you can find me there on Facebook under Chuji Kingfisher and uh, I would be glad to help you out in, in uh, any way that I can and point you in the right direction but I thank you for watching here today and uh, thank you to my daughter for being my cameraman here and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this program. Thank you very much. What well on. Shkin.